Hi, this is Jenny. Welcome to my channel, Designs with Paper. I have an art journal page video for you here today. It is the July Mission Inspiration Prompt. And I'm a little bit behind the game, but we're going on with the show anyway. So here is the recipe card that Mike put out on the Facebook group. The colors are lemon, poppy, and cobalt. The ingredients are numbers, triangles, music, something white, and stamp. And the theme is carnival or circus, feathers, sequins, music and dance, or lions, clowns, and acrobats. And you'll see which way I go in just a minute. So I have a piece of mixed media paper here. It is about five and a half by eight and a half. And my first plan of action is to take this diamond stencil and apply some modeling paste with a plastic spatula. I'm going to zoom out here a little bit so that you can see the whole page. I know it's not exactly triangles, but diamonds are made up of two triangles stacked on top of each other, right? <laughs> it's a little bit of a cheat or a little bit of a workaround, but I love the stencil. I'm in kind of an argyle phase, which is weird. And this is one of two stencil set from Pink Fresh Studio that makes an argyle pattern. So I have this um, texture paste it's a little bit old and it's a little bit thick and a little bit hard to spread. Um, I have since learned that when you open a modeling paste or texture paste like this, it's a good idea to put some plastic or um, um, press and seal or something on the inside of the, the bottle underneath the cap just to keep it from drying out. I am not covering the entire page with the modeling paste. I'm just adding a few um, diamonds or triangles, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> with my spatula here and there, just for a little bit of added texture to the background. And it's kind of funny because when we make art journal pages or mixed media art, we do a lot of things that end up being in the background. And that's just because it pleases us, right? When we are creating mixed media art journal pages, especially, they're for us. And we do the things that make the creator happy. And I like having visual interest. I like being able to run my fingers over the page and feel the texture. So I am going to, I did a quick cleanup. I edited that part out, but now I am using my heat tool to kind of dry that modeling paste so I can move on to the next step. Um, most of this video is in real time. I did speed up some of the fussy parts like the heat drying, and I did cut out some of the little cleanup parts. The next thing I want to do is add some white gesso to the top of this paper and over the modeling paste. And the reason I do that most of the time is because when you add a medium, especially a liquid medium, to an untreated paper, the paint or the ink just soaks right into the paper. The gesso kind of helps the, the medium, the ink, the paint, um, just kind of stay more to the top of the page. So it brushes on better, it um, blends a little bit better, and you don't use as much. When you have a, an untreated page, the paint soaks right into that paper, so it takes a lot more paint to get the, the look that you're going for. I am not putting a really thick coat of gesso on this page. I'm just trying to make sure the majority of the page is covered. And now that I've done a quick cleanup and dried it off a bit, I am going to start with my next layer. I have this napkin that I purchased online from an online shop that sells collage medium, and I will try to remember to link that down below. I am just using one corner of this napkin, and instead of cutting it with scissors, I'm just going to wet the seam here, and it will pull apart. And it pulls apart really well when you do that, except for those two pieces where I got a ton of water out of my water brush right there but it's okay. We're not looking for perfection. We're looking for layers. So now that I have this corner cut off, I will go ahead and separate this. It is a two ply napkin and I only want to work with the top layer, the music notes. Once I had this page created, I did have a couple of thoughts of how I could have done things just a little bit differently. Um, but in the end, I still like how the page turned out. So like I said at the beginning, as soon as I saw Mike post this prompt, I had one thought that came to mind. It's kind of my mantra when I am in a situation that's kind of 
gone off rails a little bit, gone a little bit nuts. And I am not the one in with the ability to pull it back in into place. I'm not going to tell you what that thought was yet. We are going to find that out later. <laughs> so I will be attaching this napkin with some matte gel, some gel medium. A matte gel medium. There we go. <laughs> it is matte, it is not shiny, and it is a gel medium, meaning it is not liquid, but it is not solid. And I'm just going to apply it with the brush. I will put a little bit of the gel medium on the paper, and then I will put the piece of napkin down and put some gel medium over the top of the napkin piece as well. One thing that happens when you put gel medium down is it also makes this piece of paper here non-porous. So I can add other mediums to the top of it, but I have to make sure that they are permanent or waterproof or they will slide right off. I am not going to cover the entire page with the napkin, just some pieces here or there, probably three, maybe four, usually three, because our brains like odd numbers, which I find really funny because the, the perfectionist in me wants even everything, but when I create art journal pages, I'm really cognizant of that rule of threes, that rule of odd numbers. Anyway, just kind of a weird thing. I got kind of a big clump of matte medium there. Yikes, that's a little bit of a, <laughs> that could make a mess if I'm not careful. This um, napkin, I don't know if it's even in English. I didn't look at it that hard, to be honest. I just like that it had the music notes on it that I needed. I have a stash of napkins and rice paper that I keep for things just like this. <laughs> All right, so now that I have the matte gel on, I am going to go ahead and do a quick cleanup, get my brush in some water, and dry that matte gel off. I keep my heat tool moving really quick. I don't want to uh, melt the texture paste that's down there or kind of make the matte gel bubble either. All right, so now we're going to add some color, and I have these pigment powders. So this brand is Brusho, and you can't even see it when I'm sprinkling it out on the page there. You, you won't see anything until I add the water. And then it's kind of like this um, burst of color. So I think Brusho, make, Brusho brand makes the pigment and I think they're color burst, Brusho color burst, maybe something like that. I, will, I, I found this box of them on Amazon. It was a deal of the day and they were not too bad of a price. A little bit goes a really long way though. Like I sprinkled a tiny bit of powder on that page and I got quite a bit of color out of it. I am going to continue to add water. I want the color to kind of drip down the page a little bit. I have no intention of coloring the whole page with yellow pigment, just enough to kind of add that lemon yellow color to the background of my page. And I'm just cleaning up the water as it drips while I am kind of shaking it off there. And you will notice, um, if you, you know, I can see it, <laughs> um, the, the color kind of clings to the edge of that texture paste, that modeling paste I put on through the stencil. And it kind of cl clings to the edge of the napkin right there. I'm going to go ahead and dry this off. I don't want it to move anymore. I want it to, now it's watercolor. So if I add more liquid, it's going to move. But I want it to be as dry as possible when I move on to the next step. So my next step is my focal image. And I went online and found a picture of a circus tent. And I printed it out. And my printer did something kind of wonky and didn't print very well. So I went ahead and colored over it with Copic markers. Um, and then I cut it apart. I needed to make it fit onto my page without making the whole size of it, the, t the height of it shrink. So I just went ahead and cut it apart so that I could put it on my, my art journal page here. One thing I think I should note here is when you are creating mixed media for yourself, um, the images you use are yours to use in theory. I try to be really careful about um, the images I get off the internet. I want to make sure that they are free for personal use at least, if not free for all use. I, I want to make sure that the people who create the digital images I'm using are getting credit for their work. And this was one that I found that was free for personal use. Um, I am adding some matte 
medium on the back on the page and then on the back of the image as well. And what this does is it gives you just a couple of seconds to slide the, the focal image into place before it starts to grip. And by putting the matte gel on the, the art journal page and the back of the focal image, it prevents it from wrinkling most of the time. I mean, you might sometimes get wrinkles, especially if you are impatient, like I tend to be sometimes, but most of the time, and this is just printed on regular old printer paper. Most of the time I can get it to lay down nice and smoothly. If I've got the back of the focal image and the page, I'm putting it on wet with the matte gel. And you can see the corner of that rolled up a little bit because it was wet, but it laid down really nice. There's not any wrinkles in the curtains that detract from the image at all. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the top of the tent, add a little bit of matte medium to the paper or the page and add a little bit of matte medium to the back of that uh, copy paper. So you can see that I went with the circus theme as opposed to the carnival theme this month. Um, and my tent includes the colors red and blue. So I have my cobalt and my poppy in there. It's not really a poppy red, but it's kind of a poppy red. <laughs> so here is the second piece of my focal image. When I was a kid, we had this game called Barrel Full of Monkeys. And I'm not sure that we ever played it as a game. In fact, I'm not sure if I even know the rules to the game. We just kind of played with the monkeys. <laughs> I'm not... They, they have these funny long arms that hook around. And I think the point of the game is to see how many you can string together out of the barrel without losing any. Um, but that's not how I remember ever playing it. We just kind of made chains of monkeys. <laughs> but I, so I, anyway, <laughs> I have this barrel of monkeys. It was also an image I found online that um, did not have a um, don't use claim, like it didn't have a watermark or a copyright image on it. And because this is just my personal use, I felt okay um, using it. I wouldn't use this image if I was trying to sell this, this art journal page. But for my own personal use, I think it is fine. I am uh, adding some matte gel to the top of this image so that it will become a porous surface or I'm sorry, a non-porous surface, I do plan to add another layer over the top of this barrel. So I'm just going to go ahead and spread that matte medium out and make sure I haven't left any um, clumps of it laying around on my page. And I will rinse off that brush and close up my matte gel and dry that, that gel off so that it's ready for the next part of the page. Um, it did take a minute to dry. It was kind of humid here in Virginia when I created this page. It was really funny when we were out west, we were in the middle of a heat, they were in the middle of a heat wave. So we were dying of heat stroke and we got back to Virginia just in time for them to have super humid weather because of some tropical storm weather going up the east coast. <laughs> what are you going to do, right? So I have gone ahead now that it's dried and pulled out my scissors and clipped the the napkin and the pieces of copy paper, the focal image that have hung outside my page, just trimmed them off. I probably could have waited till it was dry and tore, just kind of tore them and it would have been fine, but my scissors were on my desk and I was impatient. Okay, a little, um, got a little bit of matte gel on my page and I'm just gonna clean that up and move on to the next step. So our recipe list here, we know we have our colors. We have the lemon, the poppy, and the cobalt, and we have now involved our theme. We have added triangles, kind of, sorta, with the diamond background, and we did add the music with the napkin. The next thing I want to work on are the numbers. And I have a stencil from, I think it's a, dilu a dilution stencil that has these numbers in the middle. And I'm going to add some yellow acrylic paint. Um, I thought I would add it with this kind of dried out baby wipe, but it, it was not dried out enough. It just kind of soaked up the paint. So after attempting to put the paint through the stencil with that wipe, I said, never mind. And I grabbed a makeup sponge. So I have these 
dollar store makeup wedges that I, I use the wide end and when the paint is dry, I cut it off and I keep cutting the sponge down until I have no sponge left to cut down. <laughs> so yeah, I use all of the sponge. I don't throw any of the sponge away until it cannot be used again. So I have gone ahead and added some more yellow paint. It's um, a mixed media paint to the, or sorry, mixed media paint. It's an acrylic paint. I've added it to my media, my craft mat down there. And I'm just picking it up with that sponge and pushing it through the stencil. I don't want it to be um, in your face. I just want to put it on top of the focal image to kind of push that focal image back into the artwork so that the it becomes one piece of art. And after I added the yellow paint, I decided I wanted to add some blue paint as well. Now this paint, this blue is not cobalt. It is um, a distress color, probably broke in China. I don't know. I just grabbed it. It was sitting on my desk and it was blue. <laughs> I have a lot of things sitting on my desk. I really need to clean it off and, and put things away. But I decided that I needed a little bit more yellow, so I went ahead and cut that sponge off because I couldn't put the wet blue paint back into the yellow paint and still have it be yellow. I wanted to add some numbers to this barrel of monkeys down here on the bottom. And just, again, just trying to make that focal image part of the artwork in general. And I liked how that looked, so I went ahead and grabbed that Broken China Distress Paint, and I will add a little bit of that onto the, the Barrel of Monkeys. I keep wanting to, I don't know what I keep wanting to say, <laughs> the Barrel of Monkeys as well. And it's just another thing to add interest and texture to the picture. It's not something that's supposed to be in your face, like I said. And I needed a little bit more yellow. So yeah, I just keep going until I feel like it's done. And I like how that looks. The barrel's got some numbers on it. The tents have some numbers on it and they are a, a cohesive art unit. Now, funny thing is I had these triangle pieces on my desk in a tray of leftover die cut parts that I had used on a different project. And I saw them sitting there when I moved my craft mat and we thought, well, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and add a couple of these triangles to this page for fun. Um, it, it was kind of funny that they were already cut out in a yellow pattern paper. It's a little yellow, I don't know, polka dot or grid. I think it's a grid, like little squares. And I just stacked three of them up in this bottom right-hand corner. I grabbed my little pickup stick in case I needed it because at this point in the project my hands are either wet from washing them repeatedly or they're still covered in sticky from the matte gel. That's just how I roll when I do mixed media projects. Um, I like the glue stick because it grips tight and it holds it on there but man I end up with sticky fingers using that glue stick as well. So there we have just three little triangles down at the bottom, mostly just because they were on my desk and triangles it is a, an ingredient for this art journal page. So we have triangles, we have numbers, we have music. All we have left is something white and stamp. And this is where my quote comes into play. I have printed part of the quote on printer paper and I'm going to stamp the rest of the quote. And originally my plan was to stamp the quote, the stamp the words to the quote right on the art journal page. But because of the, the um, texture paste, it really didn't stamp well. So I have this line of paper or this, this word strip that says not my, and I'm going to start stamping some words here. And I have done that in fast forward because you really, really don't want to sit here and watch me stamp these letters. And um, the quote I came up with the minute I saw this prompt was not my monkeys, not my circus or not my circus, not my monkeys. I can't remember which order it goes in now all of a sudden, but I have cut those words or stamped those words and I'm going to trim them down with my paper trimmer. 
and just make little rectangle squares or <laughs> rectangle squares, <laughs> rectangle word strips. Um, so now I have something white, the, the paper that I've put the quote onto, and I have something stamped. I have these two words, circus and monkeys, stamped onto white paper. When I find myself in a situation that has kind of gone a little bit crazy or out of control, and it is not in my ability to bring it back into control, this is my mantra. Not my monkeys, not my circus. Except I think it's supposed to be the other way around. Not my circus, not my monkeys. But I think I put not my monkeys, not my circus. Actually, what I did was I put not my circus, not my monkeys. And then I thought it was wrong. So before it dried, I took it off and fixed it, which you'll see at the pictures at the end. But whatever. I decided I did not like monkeys and circus just as a rectangle block. So I went ahead and did a little bit of fussy cutting around those words. So now I am going to go ahead and glue these down. I will pull my glue stick out again. And I have put it down, not my circus, not my monkeys. When I was done filming and ready to take pictures, that's when I realized, oh, I think that's backwards. And I was able to pull up those words and glue them back down without damaging the page. So in the pictures, it is the opposite order. <laughs> but I am just pulling out this school glue stick. This is just a Scotch glue stick. It's pretty sticky and it really, I haven't had a problem with things coming off my art journal pages when I use this glue stick. I don't use it when I make cards because they're handled more and I don't know how it would hold up, but I've not had a problem with this, with items coming off art journal pages. So here we go. We have not my circus, not my monkeys, and this is my mantra for those crazy, crazy days. And this was the first thing I thought when I saw Mike show the prompt for the month of July. I thought, yes, this is all about the circus and the monkeys and the ability to let go of things that you cannot control. So now I'm going to go down my checklist again and make sure I have all of my colors, all of my ingredients. And yes, it is not a rule that you have to use them all, but I like to use them all. I am going to go ahead and glue this recipe card on the back of my art journal page so that when I look at it later, I will remember why I did what I did on this page. I really appreciate that. Wow, that was not English. I really appreciate you guys hanging on to the end. This was a little bit of a longer video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like the art journal page. I would really appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up or heck even a thumbs down if you didn't. If you could subscribe to my channel and share my channel, that would be great. Thanks so much for stopping by. Have a great day.